Hello and welcome to Cast Talks. Now the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that I am not in fact Alex Ritson. He's taken a well-deserved two-week holiday. 2009 was a bad year for mergers and acquisitions and as the market recovers, we can expect to see a 20% increase in joint venture activity. At least that's the findings from the Cass Business School's Mergers and Acquisitions Research Center. I spoke to Anna Felton to find out more. Well, I think the reasons for doing a joint venture is threefold. Um, you want to tap into a foreign market where you haven't been doing business before, and it's imperative that you get some local expertise. So um, a very common uh, deal that you then go ahead and doing rather than an M&A is a joint venture. Um, the second thing is you want to grow your business, but you need to share the risk. And I think that's why one of the reasons why we see more of them or will see more of them going forward. Um, the third one is your capital constraints. So you don't have enough capital maybe to do an outright acquisition. Um, and that's another reason why uh, you can choose to do a joint venture as a sort of dating before marriage to get to know the other partner. Um, we've been seeing this with uh, Russian Renaissance Capital, who recently announced a joint venture with the Serbian counterpart, saying that it could well be a first step in an M&A process. But of course, marriages can fail. What are the big dangers of damage for businesses if they enter into a joint venture that doesn't work out? Um, yes, I mean, as with any deal or any business venture, it's going to be a risk there. Um, I think with joint ventures, you have to be sure about what you share with the other partner and what you keep within the business, what you protect. I mean, for the joint venture to work, for you to be successful in, in a joint business, you need to share some information. Otherwise, why would you even go into to this sort of partnership? But on the, on the same token, you need to protect what's yours and what you don't want the other, per, the other partner to know, especially in the beginning before when you're still sort of feeling, feeling your grounds with the other partner. So what should be the key areas of compatibility that businesses should look for in a potential partner before entering a joint venture? What would you say were the top two or three most important factors? Um, I think trust between the partners is the, is the key issue. Uh, once that falls down or breaks down, that, that's pretty much it. You don't, that's the end of your joint venture. There's no more partnership. Um, so that's a key thing. You, know, you have to assess the other partners. Is, is this a partner that you can trust? Negotiations is a great period for, for sort of assessing the other partner. I mean, you can look at uh, do they produce things in time? Do they play with open cards? Um, you know, much like you would fill out anyone that you sort of uh, start a relationship with. Um, you also need to look at it as a mirror exercise. So are your business, are they ready for this sort of deal and this partnership? I mean, can you fulfill the commitments? Uh, so I think that those are the key issues. But if a joint venture starts to turn sour, there's no agreement on joint operations or exit strategy, what are the options for getting out when you reach that kind of deadlock? Well, if you can't agree, which basically means you can't agree on on the price for selling the joint ventures if you don't want to continue to do business together, then you, you are on a deadlock. Um, and there are three uh, kind of ways of, of, of going about to, to, to solve this, this deadlock that you're in. And you can, uh, it's called, there's three different options in there, Russian roulette, um, Dutch action, uh, auction, and uh, shootouts. And basically, they're just ways of uh, agreeing on a price when your negotiations have failed. So you, you send off a sealed bid uh, where you have a minimum price that you, you're willing to sell for or uh, a maximum price that you're willing to buy for. I should point out that this is not a desirable situation. It tends to um, decrease value of the joint venture. You're much better off agreeing as partners still uh, on, on a suitable price and selling it off to, to one of the partners, alternatively finding another, another player in the market who, who wants to buy it. As you said from your report and in the financial press at the moment, this is the peak season for joint ventures, but what's the period after this? What can we expect for the future of the M&A market? I think with joint ventures, they tend to be less cyclical uh, in activity than, than an M&A cycles. Um, so I think you have to look a bit long, more long term as we did in the study. Uh, you know, we look at the recovery period uh, in terms of stock market cycles. So uh, I think uh, we will see a lot of joint ventures going forward for the next year or so. Um, so we have to look a bit more long term than, than with M&A. 
Um, I think on the M&A front, however, uh, we will see a lot more cross-border deals and possibly a lot more deals in the emerging markets because those are the markets that have recovered quicker or quickest from, from the recent credit crisis. So I think a lot of firms will uh, try to find ways to tap those markets.